my family began attending the chapel in late August 1973, almost 47 years ago. And that's why I was asked to say a few words about my experiences with Canterbury House over most of its lifetime. How has this space ministered to me and the university community? My memories include thousands of coffee hours. I did the math. <laughs> uh, we had talent shows with the magicians and other shows with Janet Phelps singing there's a fairy at the bottom of my garden. I did children's chapel, worked in the nursery, taught Sunday school. I've been on the vestry multiple times. We met in the library. Uh, we had adult ed meetings. I always preferred the receptions, the Easter and Christmas and incidental receptions because they were upstairs. Uh, more recently, we've had more funeral receptions. Once we even had a wedding reception in this space, if you can believe that. I came once a week for eight years to the library to study ministry for education for ministry, which is an extension program from the University of the South to learn theology. We held services here in this space for three years while the chapel was being completed. And perhaps that was the most attractive space during my whole time here. I don't know what we did, but somehow or another it was more attractive at that time. I, I, I asked, asked, asked to be a bunch of stained glass windows. <laughs> yeah. 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 I asked my children for some of their memories. Matthew said, donuts in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> we have a flashback. <laughs> in spite of Buddy Holtzhunter. <laughs> oh. uh, Rebecca, who lived in the apartment upstairs one year, said she remembers watching with her flatmate the explosion of Challenger. Oh. Mm -hmm. Naomi's memory was one I recently had cause to recall myself. Naomi was in middle school, maybe, when we had a potluck to which Forrest Brown came dressed as Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi went on to tell me that she is now very grateful that she was witness to and experienced the kind of safe space and company that Forrest felt those many years ago. All of which is to say that the important thing to me and my family over the years has not been the space itself, but the people and the activities of the community of space in which we find ourselves. However, <laughs> the space itself has an impact on our activities. I always preferred <coughs> the upstairs receptions, crowded as they often felt, because I don't really like this space. <laughs> uh, there were design flaws in this building, which John Paul will tell you about shortly. We have deferred maintenance, having made the decision to replace this building. The space in which we live can either enhance or inhibit our community activities. I remember when we were talking about chapel completion when someone said, having a shed hanging off the back of our building made it look like we didn't care about our space. So even though I believe that what we do together in the space is much more important than the space itself. When the space is deteriorating, it does have a negative effect 
on the people in the space. At this time, we are not universally accessible. Our elevator is not reliable. There are members of the congregation who do not join the extension of fellowship and coffee hour because they can't get there. What if we had event space, a wedding venue, small offices for student organizations? Might we be better ministers? And last but not least is the problem of insufficient staff to even have our space available on a full-time basis. My personal goal would be for students to be able to drop in and use welcoming space from nine to nine. How can we afford that? Jamie's going to tell you about that later. <laughs> so I say thank you, old Canterbury House, <laughs> for being a positive space for me for so long and for the Ministry of Service to the university community. But I look forward to a new and improved space to come. Now, I'm not quite finished. <laughs> 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 I make a plug for my Monday opportunity <laughs> for <laughs> self-examination. <laughs> the South Wall Whitney for self-examination showed up in my mother's prayer material. We looked it up online and it's still there in new language. We've changed some of the language ourselves over the past four years and added a petition on racism. It covers all our sins. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to, oh, it, we, we meet 5.30 on Mondays in the chapel, much nicer space. <laughs> uh, we read the litany together and do some walking. So please join us, 5.30 on Mondays. But I want to finish up with one of the petitions, which I think is appropriate as we prepare to listen to each other for the next several presentations and during our conversation. Remember, we're asking for deliverance from our sins. <laughs> from pride and self-will. From desire to have our own way in all things. From overweening love of our own ideas and blindness to the value of others from resentment against opposition and contempt for the claims of others, enlarge the generosity of our hearts, enlighten the fairness of our judgments, and from all selfish arbitrariness of temper, save us and help us, O oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs>